Number 14. Explain the difference between a nonpolar covalent bond, a polar covalent bond, and an ionic bond. Okay, so for all three of these, they're talking about a certain bond. So that means that we're not talking about the overall compound or molecule. We're just talking about the individual bond between two atoms. So basically the difference comes down to how these atoms share electrons. Remember, when one atom binds with another atom, so let's just say that this one is, I don't know, atom number one, whatever element this is, and this is atom number two, they will always interact with each other, right, by electrons. Never protons, never neutrons, it's always electrons. So they basically link up by either transferring electrons or sharing them. So there's always going to be electrons in here, all right? And that's how they link up together. They either share electrons or one atom will be super greedy and take it all for themselves. You see how these two electrons are super close to atom number two, and it's basically leaving atom number one with nothing. There's literally no electrons here, right? So that's going to be the difference. Now, let's paint a picture here. I'm going to give you three different types. Let's say that we have, I don't know, um, let's say that we have an H... O bond. Let's say that we have a, um, we'll do, we'll do like a pure one. So we'll do an O, O bond. And then we'll do a, I don't know, M, G, O bond. Okay. So let's talk about how the electrons in these bonds, in these three bonds can either be nonpolar covalent, polar covalent, and an ionic bond. Now, these all come down to electronegativity difference. I'm going to put EN, difference. And difference means subtraction, all right? So basically, all of your numbers here on the periodic table, or all the elements on the periodic table, have certain numbers here. You see magnesium has 1.2, boron has 2.0. That's their electronegativity. Electronegativity is just a fancy way of saying an atom will attract will attract electrons in bond to itself. So if you have a high electronegativity, that means that whatever the atom is that has the high electronegativity will be like greedy and take the electrons for itself. So going back to the example over here, since these electrons are more close to atom number two, atom number two, whatever it would be, would have a high electronegativity compared to atom number one, which one, which would have a low electronegativity. Now, when we go through dipoles and stuff like that, this, the, the one that is, has a higher electronegativity would have the, you know, notation of a symbol like this. It would be, this one would be partial negative, and this one would be partial positive if it was a covalent compound, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. All that you really have to know right now is that if electrons are more closer to an atom, that atom, whatever it is, will always have a higher electronegativity than the atom that the electrons are farther away from, all right? So, Know the trend for electronegativity. As you go from left to right, electronegativity will increase. And just note that the noble gas group, which should be over here, does not get counted because they are inert, meaning that they don't react with much. So actually, the um, most electronegative element is fluorine. It's not the noble gas family. All right, so just keep that in mind. And as you go down a group, you decrease in electronegativity, all right? So that's why lithium has a 1 for electronegativity number, and francium has a 0.7. Okay, so now let's find the electronegativity differences for these three examples that I put here. I'm just going to put 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1, so I'm just going to put that up here. Oop. 
2.1. Oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.5. Now, when you take this difference, right, the electronegativity difference, just know that you can always just subtract the, we'll just put, actually I'll put the higher electronegativity minus the lower electronegativity. The difference should always be a positive number. So if you do the, the opposite and you get a negative number, just remember that you always just take the absolute value. So when I find the difference between these two atoms, it's 3.5 minus 2.1. 3.5 minus 2.1 is 1.4. So this would fall into the category of a polar covalent bond. That means that there is, and that's over here, right? So that means that there is some pull to one element, or I'll say atom. And what's getting pulled? The electrons are being pulled. So if I can erase this and draw that little space where the electrons are, who do you think will have the electrons closer to them? It's going to be the oxygen, because there is well, there, because oxygen has a higher electronegativity. All right? So from the range between 0.4 and 1.8, there is a pull. The more electronegative element will get the electrons basically closer to itself. But just know that it's still in the realm of sharing. So it's still a covalent bond. So it still means that those electrons will be shared. Hydrogen still has those electrons. It can count for those electrons but oxygen just has them closer. Now for example number two, we have two oxygens. So oxygen is 3.5 and the other one is 3.5. So when you try to find the electronegativity difference, 3.5 minus 3.5 is zero. So this would be a pure covalent bond. More specifically, they call it a nonpolar covalent bond. That's basically saying that there's really no pull. The electrons are not being pulled to one atom or another. It's equal sharing. So if I erase this bond and I draw the space, where do you think those electrons are going to be? They're going to be right smack down the middle because there's no pull between the atoms. One has the same electronegativity as the other one. So this would be a nonpolar covalent bond. Nonpolar, you could think of no pull. And still, it's covalent, so you're still sharing the electrons. So I'm just going to say this is nonpolar covalent bond, and this one is the polar covalent bond. Okay, last but not least, Mg and O. Mg has an electronegativity of 1.2. Oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.5. So if we did 3.5 minus 1.2, 1.2, you get 2.3. That's a huge difference. That's greater than 1.8. So this bond would be classified as ionic. So when I erase this, where do you think the electrons are going to be? They're going to be all the way to oxygen, right? The rule still is that the higher electronegativity still gets the electrons, but literally they're going to be so close to the oxygen that this is a transfer of electrons. It's not a sharing anymore. Remember, covalent bonds are shared. Ionic bonds, since the oxygen has them so, 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 so close, this is a transfer of electrons, which means that the magnesium threw the electrons to the oxygen, and the oxygen is so greedy that it just takes it, all right? So that's the difference here. Notice and try to understand the difference between where the electrons lie. In a nonpolar covalent bond, the electrons are shared equally between the two atoms. Next step up would be a polar covalent bond in which the electrons are pretty close to the atom. But then in a ionic bond, which is the third one, 
the electrons are so, 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 so close that magnesium can't say that it has those electrons anymore. It's not being shared. So it's kind of like a broken. Magnesium lost the electrons and oxygen gained them all. So that one's the super, super greedy one. All right. So that's basically the difference between a nonpolar covalent bond, a polar covalent bond, and an ionic bond. Covalent bonds are both shared, ionic bonds are transferred, and it just depends on the difference of how those electrons are in the bond and who gets them more as opposed to who shares more. All right? So that's the end for this one. I hope you guys understood this. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'll always answer you guys if you have any questions. Um, yeah, thank you for coming here, and I'll see you guys all in the next question. Like this video if you like it. And subscribe to the channel if you want to. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next question.